Have you ever found yourself dreaming of a life in early 20th century Warsaw where you partner up with demons and use their mystical powers alongside your own incredible perception to solve crimes, all while meeting with Rasputin? Yes, that Rasputin. If you said yes, then you have an interesting and particular taste, my friend. But if you said no, like most people, then hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be looking for the nearest time machine. Hey there, people of the fort. My name is Derek, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Thaumaturge. I'd like to thank Fool's Theory and 11-Bit Studios for extending the chance for us to cover this game. There's a lot to discuss, so let's jump right in. I first experienced the Thaumaturge through a demo during Steam Next Fest. I got to explore a small village and some surrounding landmarks to uncover why everyone was at each other's throats. I investigated crime sites, chatted with townsfolk before beating them to a pulp, don't worry, they kinda deserved it, manipulated horse carriage drivers, and reconnected with my not-so-creepy but terrifying salutor, Uper. There's something raw and gritty about this game that leaves you waiting to turn the page to find out what happens next. After two hours of immersing myself as the protagonist, Victor, the Thaumaturge flew to the top of my most anticipated releases in 2024. Let's break down what there is to do in the Thaumaturge and what makes it such a drawing experience. You're really experiencing two games at once. On one hand, you have an investigation simulator, questioning the townsfolk and finding clues to answer questions and solve crimes or personal problems. But if I'm being honest, Victor seems to find himself in the middle of a lot of problems that may or may not be of the concern of the local authorities. When people aren't talking, you enter the other game, which is a turn-based fighting mode, but it actually has a surprising amount of depth to it. At face value, it seems like you don't have much freedom to outwitting or overpowering your opponent, but in actuality, you will gain new enhancements that you can assign to your abilities, letting you customize your fighting style and catering it towards the enemies at hand. At its core, that is the experience that the Thaumaturge offers, but there is something that makes this adventure unique. Victor isn't your ordinary detective, he is, you guessed it, a Thaumaturge, which is essentially a magician, kind of? In this game, a Thaumaturge partners with creatures called Salutors. Salutors come in many different forms, but they are all terrifying. Big mouths, creepy tongues, birds, essentially things of nightmares. Without spoiling too much, Salutors cling onto specific flaws found in humans. Thaumaturge go around to relieve these affected humans and maybe even catch the Salutors for their own personal use, kind of like Pokemon. This game has you encountering many different Salutors, each with their own strengths and bonuses, which in turn you can use in battle, but you can also use them to increase your perception of your surroundings to find more clues, improve your interactions with people, and ultimately grant you a better understanding of the world around you. As you grow stronger in the art of Thaumaturgy, you feed Victor's flaw of pride, which he often likes to use in his day-to-day -day conversation. The problem is, his prideful remarks often come off a little straightforward and aggressive, which people don't like. And to be honest, most of Victor's comments are on the more aggressive side of things, which often leads to the dropping of words and throwing of fists. Jumping from chatting to people to punching them in the face was enjoyable, and a little laughable sometimes. There's something special about questioning two guys yelling at a lamppost that then turns into a battle, only for you to punch them a few times before shooting them with a pistol, which should normally result in someone lying on the ground unresponsive. However, in this world, you would come out of the fight and your friendly opposition, brandishing gun wounds and bruises, would agree that maybe they shouldn't yell at a lamppost. Realistic? I'm not so sure, but it definitely got a chuckle out of me. I do wish that some of the transitions made a little more sense in the game though. While you have the opportunity to make choices that will affect outcomes in the game, it felt pretty linear. Most of the times, Victor was ready to fight at the slightest inconvenience when we probably could have just walked the other way. Not only that, but some of the answer choices had Victor saying something really different than I thought he was going to. I'd pick an answer choice like, kindly suggest they move away to avoid getting hurt, which would have Victor say, hey you, move yourself before you get the beat out of you, which would then make them fight me, only for me to drop them on the ground. Listen, I know this is 1905 Warsaw, but come on, were people really like this? Probably, but I still think Victor could have been the difference maker. That being said, I really enjoyed the fights. Sometimes, the story can get a little slow in between Victor's MMA fights, so when one did come about, I was on the edge of my seat plotting my combat strategy. As I mentioned earlier, these fights are turn-based, usually pinning Victor against multiple opponents, which makes it seem like he's at an unfair disadvantage, but that's where we have our Varsovian enemies fooled. We get to call our Salutor counterparts to our side in battle, which definitely evens the playing field. The Salutors in the game each come with unique fighting strengths that you can use to pair with your own abilities to attempt to get the upper hand on your foes. Some heal you after taking damage, some cripple the enemy's mental, some stick their tongue out them and wiggle it, a truly devastating assault to anyone on the receiving end. You'll find that there's a lot of strategy and adjustments you can make in these battles. As you progress through the game, you'll unlock unique enhancements that you can slot into each of your fighting moves. These vastly change how you view your turn and the effect it will have on your opponent. 
I found it absolutely necessary to delay pain on Victor's end as long as possible by slowing enemies or in some instances, skipping their turns entirely. While you have the help of your Salutor, Victor is the only person that can actually get hit, making him the center of focus of two to four enemies at a time. The combat scenarios are extremely hard, especially if you are playing on one of the more challenging difficulties. I found myself repeating battles over and over again, trying new methods to win and outsmart the opposition. There are quite a few methods to play, and some work better against certain enemies than others, so you'll find yourself testing out new approaches when you get stuck. It took me around 20 hours to complete the Thaumaturge, which was a little longer than I felt the game should have been. I did some of the side quests, but there was still a lot more for me to experience. However, towards the end I was looking forward to seeing the resolution that my adventures with Victor had been building towards. Ultimately, the story in the world was unique, dark, and covered a setting that I haven't had the chance to explore yet. If you're looking for a game that offers a new look on turn-based combat while offering an engaging and unique story, then the Thaumaturge might be up your alley. Some areas could have been more fleshed out and some of the dialogue dragged on and felt misplaced. However, the overarching direction was worth it, which is why I'm giving the Thaumaturge the Pillowfort stamp of approval. Hopefully you check it out. If you have already had the opportunity to play, let me know what you think about Victor and his Salutors in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing so that you can stay up to date on our latest content.